All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Before we start this video, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe because I make NBA content every single day. And later tonight, around between 1 and 2 a.m., I'll be having my first ever Madden 20 Fates of the Franchise gameplay. So look out, look out for that. I know it's going to be pretty late, but it's probably going to be like a double or triple upload that day. So I'll upload again at 1 o'clock. I just want to play Madden. It's a new game. It's something different. I just, I just wanted something new to play. But, we have our first official 2K20 news. And just like every year with 2K, they come out in different variations. They come out with the My GM first and My League. They come out with that news first. Then in a couple of weeks, I think they'll either come out with My Career or My Team. I believe it's My Career. Yeah, because the, in literally less than a month, the demo comes out. So in a couple of weeks, expect some My Career news. But, we're just here to talk about My GM. As you know, I have done a, some, you know, like my GM, my league type things. I've done some rebuilds. I've done some series on it. By the way, the Heat one I did did fantastic. I might have to do that again. But there's some news, you know, there's not major changes, all right? So let's just talk about, this is the Forbes. I'm just going to go over the highlighted stuff. If you want to take a look at this, you see the website. I'll leave the link in the description, all that. So a new action point system, which seems... It seems pretty pretty cool, I guess. You know, it kind of limits you. Because usually when you go into like a my GM or my... I don't think this is in my league, by the way. I think this is strictly my GM. But usually when you get in, you want to like trade this player. Then wherever you got back, trade him again. Just like King of the Fourth Quarter says. We get assets and we flip them. You can't really do that. I guess the action points limit you to how much you can do. How much, how many players you can sign. How many players you can trade. So I guess that's kind of cool. So that's not really much to say. Uh, 2K's attempted to convey the challenges of running an NBA team. So it's really just more of a realistic way, like making you more of a GM. My GM 2.0 was built to increase competitiveness with other users. And yes, there will be a leaderboard in My GM. I don't know how this is going to work, but there will be a leaderboard in My GM. I might get, might get like, then people are going to glitch it out, let's be honest here. People are going to glitch it out. But if this is what I think it is, and. There's not 500 cutscenes when you're simming, and it doesn't take over an hour to sim. I might actually play a lot of my GM, honestly. It's they have a leaderboard. It's not that big of a deal, but still, it's something new. If you're playing in my GM, you're not in a, in it alone. I can't speak. That's the purpose of the mode, and it's always been fun for those with the appreciation for a completely single player experience. So they kind of making it more like multiplayer, I guess, just with the what you call it with the point system. For example, if you choose the Los Angeles Lakers, you will get fewer points for LeBron James winning the MVP than you would get if you were controlling the Chicago Bulls and somehow traded for Giannis onto the Kumpo and he repeated as the league MVP. So there's an example right there. Um, to get the highest score on my GM leaderboard, you have to outplay and outmanage others. There are filters on the leaderboard that allow you to see others who are playing on the same difficulty. So my GM experience can still go into 80 years in the future. But the leaderboard itself is on a 10 to 15 year, you know, thing. 10 years on medium, 15 on hard. They will have an easy, medium, and hard difficulty. So they still got that now, but I guess it's more, you know, in depth this time. My GM XP and leveling. The new skill tree, which I'm actually excited for. They actually have a skill tree. Who would have thought that a basketball game would have a skill tree? <laughs> like a GM, ver that is just weird. But the skill tree, you can see. Um, leadership, a man of a locker room, a leadership focused GM is better um, better able to build the trust of those around him. And you can just see the rest over here. I'm not going to read them all. My GM 2.0 revamped relationships, goals, and tasks. This is what everyone's looking for. This is what everyone's looking for. If you know, if you ever played my GM, you're you will get the dumbest cutscenes or the dumbest pop ups. Ever while simming, you will sim literally one game, and your sixth man would say, "I want to be a starter." You go, "No, you're not going to be a starter." The next game, it's a, it's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. So I guess they changed that this time. It's very difficult to create human and controversial elements in a franchise mode that are engaging. Yet this is the part of what makes a good version of the concept stand out to fans. 2K is revamping most of these tasks and relationship duties for 2K20. So basically, they're fixing you know just stupid pop-ups stupid things that pop up super morales and all that stuff 
Wow, there's so many ads on this website, it's just lagging. I, it's pretty annoying. But that's actually pretty cool. It, that's the main part of why I might play. So, tasks can come from anyone in my GM world in 2K20. The owner, staff members, and players will pull on you to complete their request. It is up to you to decide which requests to try and fill. I hate to go all Frank and Franklin and con. I don't know what this is. I'm just stupid on you, but it sounds like a lot of project management 101. You need to identify the prime key. Okay. Um, for some that... Uh, wow, I can't read today. For some, that might be a star player, and for others, maybe... So basically, star players, if they have a problem, they'll tell you. If you don't get it done, they could work across the trade. They will request a trade. Also, signing players would be different. Certain players will have certain requirements, I guess, to sign them. Like, if your team sucks or if you're like in a low market, LeBron James isn't going to go to your team. Just not going to happen. Assistant GM panel offers. We don't really care. New morale and team chemistry. Team chemistry sucks in 2K19. It sucks. Team chemistry is so stupid in 2K19. But it appears managing this aspect of your team has been made more challenging. You must manage the... Uh, dude, it's summer. I'm not reading that word. Of your team as you consider different work ethics and personalities. How this affects your player ratings and performance remains to be seen. So they didn't get much information on that. But new personality badges for max players. Here it is. Max players, the top, top players who is looking for max contracts at Kawhi. The other new feature I like a lot is the addition of personality badges, specifically related to the offseason. These badges are for players who are free agents looking to, at a max deal. So players who want a max deal like LeBron, like a Kawhi Leonard, like a Paul George. And they have traits, I guess, and way to get like, you know, them to sign to sign there. So, Media Ringmaster. This player thrives in front of the cameras and prefers to play in big markets. For example, a Paul George, uh, a Kawhi Leonard, a LeBron James. Pretty straightforward. You should expect players with this badge to be more likely to sign to a big market team. So, if LeBron James is a free agent... And you are the Charlotte Hornets. He's not. It's going to be either extremely difficult or impossible to sign him, which is realistic. Now, Giannis, as of now, he doesn't seem like a player that would thrive in a big market or wants to be in the you know the spotlight. So it wouldn't be difficult for you to sign him to a low market team. That's that's the way I'm thinking of it. But he'd probably be on the more loyal side. He'd probably stay with the Bucks. But this one, I think, relates to Jimmy Butler with the Heat, because I'm a Heat fan, warm weather fan. These are for the beachgoers that would rather play in warm temperature climates and avoid the really cold home. So Jimmy Butler, for example, he played in Philly, he played in Minnesota. He got his way out of Minnesota, he got his way out of Philly, and he's in Miami. Apparently he's wanting to play in Miami for a couple of years now, mainly probably because of the weather and the culture around there. So players are going to want to go in the warm weather like L.A., Miami, maybe even Golden State, instead of places like New York, Boston, Cleveland. And then finance savvy, people who just want the money, like Carmelo Anthony. Sorry, Melo, but it's kind of true. These are players that factor in the tax rate and where they want to go in hopes of really... Oh, so they... Okay, never mind. That's not what I thought it would be. It's, yeah, they care about the money, but tax rate too. So if a place has high taxes, like I think Houston has like no taxes. I'm pretty sure. I might be wrong, but I believe Houston has like zero taxes. But I, that's actually pretty cool, honestly. That's actually pretty cool. Improved that da- we don't care about the draft classes. We already know it's going to be useless. Improved player DNAs. Play- I enjoy the player DNA. The player DNA is actually really useful, at least for me, for like my league. If I'm playing like with Cedric Lewis, I want to make a player in my league. Player DNA is very, very useful if I want a player to play like a specific person. Tabs out display all downloads, new and hot, and previously downloaded items. A button to filter out to just things you've created. That- not big deal. Columns that show the data created, data modified, overall and age. I kind of like that. The ability to sort based on columns, more upload slots for player DNA creations. Alright, so not really a big deal. Other tidbits. And this is the last of it. You can now quick scroll. Okay, so this is just look at the menu. And there's no other thing. So let's look at the screenshots real quick. Then we'll end this. And I'll begin on my mining grind. So we don't care about that. That's the normal, you know, what it looks like. There's some screenshots of, like, the actual menu. Here's one of them. The leaderboard menu. You can see the whole menu is different, but it looks like they didn't get rid of that background. You know how the background is kind of looking like a stadium? This, it looks like the same background, same type of, like, header down there, same type of team chemistry, all that. Just looks like mm, mm, slight differences, literally slight differences, very, very little differences, as you can see here. This is the new menu. I'm guessing this is going to be the same thing for my league, just without, like, the task, like, over here. 
it would just be like team status or calendar which this kind of reminds me of a 2k 15 and 2k um 2k 15 and 19 you know kind of merged 2k 15 had that little scroll at the bottom which i don't like that little thing because it takes forever but there is a calendar up there which 2k didn't have so i'm guessing if you go to the calendar you can just go all the way down but when you go to overview and stuff like that i guess the games pop up at the bottom so that's kind of cool the schedule so you know it's, it's something different it's not really a big deal it's only the menu but that's gonna be for me those that's all the new 2k20 my gm news i went over as much as i possibly could without dragging on this video but if you're new here be sure to subscribe because i make nba content every day madden a couple hours be ready for it one between 1 and 2 a.m eastern time then there'll be you know another video normal time i upload which is 1 p.m eastern time so be on the lookout leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you are new gg